Welcome to Robinson Foundry. In previous videos, I've shown you how I made strange looking nuts and bolts that spin in both directions, meander their way down threads, and change direction in an instant. Well this time, I'll be making a puzzle bolt with threads in the form of a complicated maze. I designed this puzzle to be reasonably challenging. It's not super easy to solve, but it's also not so difficult that you just feel like smashing it. Once I was done with my design, I 3D printed the parts to test them out. I printed these parts at a very high resolution, which meant they took a lot longer to print, but came out looking really nice. If you would like to print one of these for yourself, I'm making the files available to my patrons. You can find a link to my Patreon page in the description. The nut has a small key sticking out of the side to provide a single point of engagement that fits snugly inside the grooves of the maze. This allows for almost 360 degree movement. I also added a pathway for the nut, which allows the maze to be solved from the top or the bottom. The 3D printed version actually works really well, but as usual, I'll be making mine out of metal using a technique called Lost PLA Metal Casting. In the process I'll be using, 3D prints are coated in a ceramic material and then melted away, leaving behind a mold to pour metal into. In order to properly coat these 3D prints in ceramic and cast them in metal, first I had to glue some other 3D printed parts to them. These pieces will make pouring in the metal possible. The big pieces I attach to each bolt are a cross between a sprue and a feeder. They'll act as funnels, helping me to pour in the metal, and they'll also feed the casting as the molten metal solidifies and shrinks. This is the liquid ceramic that I used. It's called suspend a slurry. I carefully dipped the models into the slurry, making sure to avoid trapping any air bubbles on the surface of the models. The first few coats are the most important, as this is where the fine detail is captured. My goal was to slowly build up a thick shell by coating the models with slurry about 10 times. After letting the first two coats dry, I sprinkled each subsequent coat with silica sand and allowed it to dry before adding another. Ten coats later and the shells were ready to be placed in my kiln to melt out the plastic 3D prints. I decided to make two of these maze bolts to increase my chances of ending up with a successful casting. These models were printed using a plastic called PLA. PLA works great for this casting process because of its relatively low melting point and its ability to be burned away without leaving any ash behind. I use Overture Black and I can tell you from experience that it burns away very cleanly. First, I had to slowly bring up the temperature in the kiln to the melting point of the PLA. As usual, the ceramic shells cracked in a few places as soon as the temperature rose to a couple hundred degrees Fahrenheit. This actually isn't a big deal. I figured out that a great way to seal the cracks is to brush on some slurry while the shells are still relatively hot. This way, the slurry dries almost instantly, allowing me to quickly build up thick patches. Once the cracks were fixed, I placed the shells back into the kiln and heated them up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the temperature at which the PLA starts to melt out of the shells. When the majority of the plastic melted out of the shells, I opened up the kiln and removed it. Then I cranked up the temperature to around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This vitrified the shells, turning them into a ceramic that can withstand the temperature of molten metal. While the shells were heating up, I loaded some crucibles with some scrap bronze and aluminum and then fired up my homemade furnace. I melted the bronze first. Bronze has a melting point of about 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. This amount took about 30 minutes to melt. 
I let the bronze heat up to about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and then quickly pulled the shell out of the kiln and placed it in some warm sand to keep it from tipping over. Pouring in the metal while the shell is very hot allows the metal to flow into all the intricate detail in the mold before solidifying. I cast the aluminum bolts in the same way, just at a lower temperature as aluminum has a much lower melting point. When I was done, I submerged the castings in water to help cool them down. Unfortunately, this didn't soften the shells at all, but it did help keep the dust from floating around as they broke apart the molds. Breaking off the shells is definitely the most exciting part of this process because I finally get to see what the castings look like. One of the bolts turned out really nicely, but the other one ended up leaking out of a crack in the mold, which caused this. However, this can be fixed. Unfortunately, I made a rookie mistake when I made the mold for the nuts. I forgot to add a feeder at the top to supply them with metal as they solidified and shrank. And as you can see, it resulted in shrinkage on the top and bottom of each one. Unfortunately, I had to start all over and make a new set of nuts. The next set came out much nicer, but because of how I laid them down in the kiln, there was some ash left in the mold which caused some pretty significant imperfections. They're actually not as bad as they look, so I decided to go ahead and clean them up. Pay attention! These holes are not from air bubbles. This is from shrinkage, and they show just how important proper mold design is. For the sake of the video, I decided to only clean up the better of the two nuts and bolts. I started by removing the remaining ceramic shell. Ceramic shell can be extremely difficult to remove from intricate shapes, but fortunately it was relatively easy to remove from these castings. Once that was done, I separated the castings from their sprues. These horizontal bandsaws are incredibly useful and I highly recommend buying one if you do any amount of metalworking. But I still use my hacksaw for some things though. Next, I spent a few hours deburring and filing everything smooth. This is the kind of thing that would be a lot easier to do if I had a vertical milling machine. Well, maybe someday. Once the nut and bolt were filed smooth, I used some Scotch-Brite to buff the inside and outside of the castings. It was really difficult to reach the grooves inside the maze, so I used the sandblaster to hit it with some glass bead. At low pressure, glass beads can leave a very nice looking shiny surface on metal. A final touch up with some steel wool and the cleanup was done. 
The only thing left to do was to fill in the little arrow on the nut with some black paint. Well, it's finally done, and I think it looks great. I was a little concerned that the castings might shrink and cause the fit to be a little too tight, but that isn't the case. The nut fits really well over the bolt, and the key engages with the maze without binding. Since I was the one who designed this, watching me try and solve this puzzle wouldn't be very interesting, so I asked my wife to try and solve it. Let's see how fast she can do it. You may begin. Several people have already tried to solve this, and the times have ranged from just a few minutes to about three hours. I just created a Patreon page, so if you would like to help support the channel, it would mean a lot, and I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to let me know what you think by leaving a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe for future content. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Complete.